So in the previous uh, examples, everything sort of dealt with um, multiple fingers on the device, just taking X, Y, and Z, and being very literal about taking that information and applying it to a particular parameter, um, which is really cool, but uh, what if you want to interpret this stuff, and interpret some of the gestures on the pad, um, and apply them in something that uh, maybe more mechanical or you know make it um, so that it's reacting to a a gesture rather than a a position so a sort of a a combination of positions perhaps um, so that is that's a probably like maybe a little bit bigger topic than I want to tackle but I have a kind of a simple example that um, emulates a turntable. Uh, for like turntable scratching. And I think what it does is it shows like how you can take just a single contact um, and then try and figure out what that data is doing, uh, find out where it is relative to the center rather than its absolute position, and, and then sort of massage that data to get something um, that does something interesting. So you get sort of a control signal out of this rather than um, you know, a direct interaction. So what the hell am I talking about? Let's take a look. Um, all right, so this patch is the radial speed scratch, and you'll find that in the uh, live stream two folder in the examples. Um, so uh, we have, again, we have our sensor object, um, and it's sort of at its default values uh, that can be tuned to your desires. Um, and you can see in this case we're only using a single contact uh, with um, we're using a single contact and then the contact numbers just to sort of like oh I let go of this thing there's nothing touching this so let's snap back um, and uh, so we have this single contact here we can see the X Y and Z we're not even using force we're just using position and what we want to do is we want to offset from the center. So we want to sort of make this, instead of this going from 0 to 230 and um, 0 to 130 uh, millimeters, uh, we want to be able to measure from the center. So we want to get a distance from the center. Um, and uh, to do that, we sort of uh, create an offset. So uh, we get... Uh, a zero zero here and then we convert that to uh, polar coordinates um, so and that's the arctangent uh, function and so some basic trigonometry so you can see um, my center point looks like it's a little bit off I think I made a mistake there so my center point is here um, and uh, as I let's zoom in on this that's right because you can't look through my eyes so um, this is just the distance from center so as I'm out here it's uh, radius of course that can only go so far um, and when we get in the center it's going to be nearly zero um, and then I also have the angle so um, let's see zero angle is going to be up here so this goes from 0 to 90 degrees to 180 degrees to 270 degrees. So you can get this uh, radial pattern from the center. And this is super, super valuable. So for example, using, um, and if you have seen the envelope for live uh, video that we did, I made a special controller. And I basically carved out a, an area to pay attention to. Um, with a circle. So it's nice to be able to sort of distinguish that sort of unit circle from, from everything else. Um, and of course if you wanted to create you know four circles what you would do here is you would have um, this offset center you would offset it by a certain amount here so this would be your center and then you'd make four of those and you could figure out four small circles. Um, and so then I get that um, polar information and what I'm doing is I'm getting that angle. I'm not even really using the radius in this case, am I? No, so you can see this uh, 
polar patch, I'm not even have I don't have anything attached to the radius. I'm just using the angle. Um, and so we can take a look at what I do there. Um, what I want to do is I want to figure out how fast the angle is changing. Uh, that's what I'm interested in. Um, let's take a listen actually before we get too much deeper into the mechanics of this patch. So as I slowly traverse that angle, I know if I'm going backwards or forwards, I can backspin. Uh, so that is, uh, there's also a parameter for that snapback, so how fast does it go from being uh, detuned back to the start, so that's like kind of like the torque of your motor of a, turn that down a little bit, um, that, that would be the torque of your uh, turntable, so if you want to, had a really crappy turntable, you'd turn this up really high. It takes a while to speed up and make it really extreme. All right, so be nice to your turntables so they snap back quickly. Um, and then I have two different ways of scratching. So there's kind of two different models you can apply. Um, one is uh, speed. So I'm just modifying the playback speed and you can see um, how I've taken the, the angle delta. You can see this little graph here. Let's take a look at that close up. So you can see how I, and now I know I'm going forward and back and sort of the rate and just applying that number directly to uh, the speed of this sound file played in the groove object. And you can, I also have this one pole thing here and that just kind of smooths out uh, the data. So you can see how there's a lot of sort of like jumps uh, in this change, just sort of noise, um, I can smooth that out at the cost of a little bit of latency. Uh, so here's our speed graph that we're actually uh, applying. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, that's the position of the sound file, I think. Um, let's take a look. Uh, channel 1 output. Oh no, okay, here we go. That is that is the smooth uh, speed control. Uh, and then I also have uh, modifying, I can take that angle and bring it into this to change the speed. Um, I also have this button here that you can do it by position. So when you're, just, when you're going with position, it's um, just sort of like the, the uh, how can I explain this? The the timeline of the uh, of the sound file is on this radius. Um, so I scale degrees of amount of milliseconds. So um, in this case, I I'm actually emulating a record. So uh, I try to make the make it scale to how a record actually would work. Um, and so I scale the degrees to uh, 1800 milliseconds, which is about how much time it takes for a record to make one rotation at 33 RPM. But the cool thing about position is you can lock in on, on a hit. And then scratch on that actual, um, on that actual hit. So the cool thing about that is you have this sort of absolute, it's kind of an absolute versus relative scratching model. The unfortunate part is that you don't get the um, continuous playback. So you'd have to patch in some crossfading. So instead of the uh, snapback going to the speed, you could snap back a crossfader. So it would take over and you just scratch and then let it go and it would go back to the sound file plane. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a cool way of applying the API in a 
you know, as a way that creates a novel interface um, and doesn't do the sort of, um, you know, multi-finger thing. It, it kind of reconsiders what you'd want to use the interaction for.